Shalom Church. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel. I hope you're all doing well, having a blessed day, and I hope your week is going to be blessed as we enter into the month of July. Today is July 1st, 2024, and I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I pray and hope that you and your family will be immensely blessed and edified and encouraged this coming month, that the Lord will open up doors, and above all, the Lord will use you in his kingdom. So I want to welcome you to Chosen Treasure. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, I would encourage you to do it and to subscribe and to like our videos and to share it all for the glory of the Lord. I do not do this for the likes, for the followers, or the subscribers. Our channel is not even monetized and it doesn't really matter to me. But this is something that the Lord laid upon my heart, my wife's heart as a as a ministry team, as a couple together in ministry to serve and to use social media to get the word of God out. So that's what I want to talk about. You've seen it in the title today. And before I get into the meat of this video, I want to give you a quick update, a quick testimony. Yesterday, we had a very special Sunday service in our local church, and it was such a blessing. The whole theme for June was evangelism. Right here in India, there's extreme persecution and hatred and anti-conversion laws against Christians and preaching the gospel. But no matter what happens, the Lord God Almighty is in control. And we saw an amazing turnout of close to 1,500 people that came in, newcomers for all the services that we had. And many more came in and many more gave their lives to Jesus. They were born again. They were saved. They were set free. There was amazing deliverance. There was an anointing. And many people came. And I want to thank and testify of the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the power of God because revival is taking place all across the city of Bangalore. Revival is all across the nation of India. No force in hell is going to stop it. So we see the kingdom of God advancing and many are being added to the church of Jesus Christ in these end times and in these last days. There is revival happening. We see it all across Asia in South America, in Africa, and a little bit in Eastern Europe. But two places I've noticed where there's not much revival going on, maybe just a little bit, maybe just pockets of it everywhere. And I'm going to talk about that in another video, is in Western Europe and in the U.S. and in Canada. Absolutely not much revival. So the Lord is also moving across this nation of India. And even amazing revival and breakthrough and souls being saved and set free in the Middle East. Out of all the places you would think, a stronghold, a demonic stronghold over there. No, none of it can come against the name of Jesus. So I want to thank and praise God. That's just a testimony that we saw many lives changed and touched. And even if one soul is saved, heaven rejoices. More than anything else, one soul, heaven rejoices. So keep that in mind. Continue to pray for the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. That many will know the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and souls will be added. This whole month, I mean the previous month, June, was all about having a burden for souls. You're saved, you're set free, that's fine, that's good. Praise God for that. What about your family? What about your loved ones? What about even the people who hate you? Are you praying? Are you ministering to them? Are you witnessing to them? Don't you want to be a soul winner? That's the only business that we should be involved in, being an evangelist, being a soul winner. So today, it's all about Christianity, or I would say... Christians and social media, is it good? Is it bad? Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it evil? Is it holy? Is it righteous? Is it unrighteous? So we're going to get a whole bunch of questions. So I tried to squeeze up everything in this video here. So I want to talk about four platforms that are the prevalent platforms for social media. Facebook, Twitter, or X. Instagram and right here on YouTube. I'm not going to talk about TikTok. We don't have TikTok in India. It's banned, rightfully so. I don't know if it's going to be banned in other countries and I don't know anything about that. And I've seen how Christian influencers were on TikTok. Horrendous. <laughs> okay. So we have these four platforms that I believe that God has given to the church today to use it to glorify his name. And the reason I'm doing this video it's been on my heart for quite some time. It's a couple of days ago, I came across a question that was on Instagram. 
And somebody had asked a question there based on another post that they have a lot of Christian content and a Christian material and they're believers and they want to know, is it right to start a YouTube channel with Christian related content or is it necessary to get involved using social media platforms? The four I mentioned, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X and right here, YouTube to advance the kingdom of God and to preach and minister or to even promote a ministry, promote your local church, and even to promote a doctrine or even your own faith and your own belief. And there were a lot of answers, but it looks like the consensus and the bottom line is absolutely. Is it okay? Is it necessary? That's the whole point. The reason, I, the reason YouTube is more popular is because it's video and it's more popular than the other platforms. Not difficult to start, but difficult to get the views out. So is it necessary and is it okay to start a Christian related channel or a profile? And the answer is yes, you can go ahead and do it. If the Lord has laid on your heart to use this media, what we call social media, kind of weird because we're not really socializing with anybody physically. It's just through this. You're watching me on your TV, on your cell phone, on your tablet, on your big screen smart TV, whatever device that you have. I'm not really interacting with you. We're not talking one-on-one -on -one, unless it's a Zoom call or a Google Meet. That's different. But using this media to get the word of God out, to preach, to minister, to encourage, edify, I would absolutely say, yes, you could go ahead and do it. You're not going to just be another channel out there uh, among the thousands and thousands of channels or profiles. But I believe that the Lord can use any channel, any profile. So I want to get into the basics. What does it take to set up a social media platform especially right here on YouTube. I want to start with YouTube. On Instagram, it's just typing. Twitter, typing. Facebook, typing. But on YouTube, it's different. You're not typing on YouTube. You're producing video content. It's going to be your face or the trend that's right now very prevalent on social media, faceless channels, which is going to be your voice and a bunch of images, animation, a bunch of video put together uh, to create this faceless channel. So but what do you do when you need to show this, <laughs> your face, or with other people, if you're doing a podcast or an interview. All right, the basics are a camera. What I'm using right now, and you might find this surprising, is not a high-end camera. I'm using my wife's old phone that I got about, let's say, I think it's about six years right now. It's a Samsung phone. The reason I like it is because the camera, the front camera that I'm using right now is absolutely amazing. The aperture, the lens, the capture, everything is top notch over there. And you can always do editing. Uh, the mic I'm using right now is a Boya wired mic. That's right. It's completely wired. I don't have a wireless. I might invest in it. So I'm trying to put this out there that you don't have to spend much. Now, if you want to invest in a high end DSLR camera, and uh, expensive wireless mics, that's up to you. That's your budget. But I'm just saying, whatever you have, you can start using it right now. And the location, I'm doing it in my bedroom. I don't, this is not AI generated background, even if though I could get one done, but it's not necessary. It looks kind of lousy at times. It doesn't really blend in. Now you can locate, you can do it locations anywhere. You can shoot anywhere. You can do it outdoors. I, I like outdoors when it's not noisy. And you can do it in your car, you can do it in your kitchen, in your living room, in your workspace. You can have an entire room dedicated as your YouTube social media studio. Set it up with fancy lights and LEDs and audio visual system and top end stuff. That's up to you. But at the end of the day, it's the content. It's the message that you want to get out to do two things. Very important. Glorify the name of Jesus and to preach and minister the gospel of salvation. Only one place, uh, please don't ever shoot videos in your bathroom. No, that's just creepy and that's just lousy. <laughs> All right, so the message and the content is what's important. If you're gonna be using social media to point people to your ministry, make sure it's done in the context of pointing to the Lord Jesus. But Because if you're gonna be using social media, whatever platform, 
all the four platforms that I mentioned, the four major ones in the world today, if you're going to be using it to point people to yourself and to you and everything that you're saying and not pointing them to the power and to the work and to the gospel of salvation and to the name of Jesus Christ, then what you have is not a, a platform to preach a minister. What you got is a platform all about yourself. And that's where the enemy can come in and start using it against the kingdom of God. So you have to be very careful. The only reason I say this is a couple of more reasons, but the one that I want to highlight in is, are you ready to speak truthfully, confidently, with boldness, with passion, with compassion, with love, without compromise? Are you ready to speak on issues and subjects from a biblical word of God perspective, the Lord's point of view, what his word says boldly without compromise, knowing, this is very important, knowing that you're going to get criticized, that you're going to get called out, and that you're going to get abused, a lot of that, online. And guess what? It's not going to come from unbelievers or non-Christians. You're going to get a lot of this abuse and criticism and getting called out by other Christians. This is what social media has become. It's become a cesspool of Christians fighting Christians, believers against believers. It's all about my doctrine, my theology, my denomination, my church, my ministry, what I say. What does it end up doing? It's, it does not glorify God in anything. So if you're ready to start getting on social media, if you already have a social media platform and you want to talk, the question is this, are you ready to speak on issues and on topics that you know are difficult, that you probably couldn't do it one-on-one, -on -one, but using a camera, using a platform to get the message and get the word out, but doing it truthfully with integrity, with clarity and doing it boldly without compromise? That's the first question you got to ask yourself. Because if you're not in the position to do that, that's what I would say. Do not start any platform or any social media content on any platform. Don't, unless you are ready to step out. If you're not going to take criticism, if you are going to get easily offended, just because somebody said they didn't like it or you want to argue with people and contend and fight, stop. Just stop. Don't do it. And, and I see many Christians who say, I'm taking a break from social media. Uh, I'm, I'm off SM. I'm just using the word SM, social media short form. I'm off SM for about a week or two weeks or a month. It's becoming too much. The reason they do that is because they allowed social media to consume them. And they became a consumer rather than a contributor they became a consumer. Now, you could do two things as a Christian on social media, whatever platform. You can become a consumer to consume, consume, scroll, consume, click, consume, whatever. But what are you contributing? That's the whole point. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? What are you doing for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for his name, for his glory, using this platform and using this tool that the Lord has given? It's a tool. Do you understand? Just like how people are against artificial intelligence. I work with AI tools. I don't see it as somebody taking away your job and crippling an entire industry. No, it's a tool. It's, it doesn't replace anything. It complements. Social media is a tool that can complement. Remember the time of the so-called C-19 pandemic, which was nothing but a plandemic and a scamdemic? Many churches refuse to go online because they say, no, we don't want, even though we're closed down, churches are non-essential, worship is non-essential, and we decided that we don't want to go online. But eventually they did, and it opened up the possibility of many people being ministered and blessed during that time of those scam lockdowns over there that they gave their lives to the Lord Jesus. People were touched and transformed. People were broken. They were broken. They were in fear. And that's when the word of God went out. So, so, so praise God, it was used in the proper, right, righteous way, in a holy way to glorify the name of Jesus and to encourage and to uplift other people over there. So I want to talk about topics. Again, don't use social media to point to you and to point to whatever you believe in. Use it to point to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the word of God. What are the topics? I've seen in the past couple of years now, 
especially in the past year, from 2023 to now, July 2024. The number one trending topic on Christian-related social media, whatever platform, especially right here on YouTube because of the video format, is scandals. Yep, scandals and controversy. If you have a video about scandal and controversy that somebody else started and you just take it and give your take on it in your opinion, oh, you're going to get views. <laughs> You're going to hit the gold mine over there. Seriously, folks, this is happening. You're going to get more eyeballs. That's another word for views. You're going to get a lot of people visiting, especially if you have a high production value, already have a lot of subs and followers and a lot of audience, and you do something controversial, and you just add a lot of masala to it, a lot of drama to it, definitely going to get a lot of eyeballs. One of the main topics that I see are these so-called heresy hunters. Horrendous. Just terrible, terrible. They say that we are biblically calling out false preachers, false teachers, and false ministers. And what they say eventually is that we need to warn the body of Christ, and we need to keep them away from these people. And when they do that, they stray away from biblical concepts and biblical theology and stick to their own way of portraying these false prophets and these false preachers. And it's one thing to warn people. You do it once. You do it probably a second time. But when you turn it into a hobby, not a ministry, when you turn it into a personal vendetta and the only content on your social media platform is about heresy hunting, that's not ministry. And in no way Absolutely not. I'm going to call it out. Is the Lord Jesus being glorified through this? Satan's happy, but there's no way that the Lord is glorified. There's no way the Lord is joyous, rejoicing over it. Because all you got to do is sensationalize it. You got to take that controversy, that drama. You got to take that hard issue or that scandalous issue. Oh, this pastor fell. This preacher is a false prophet. This evangelist is a false preacher. And all the wrong stuff that they're doing, add on to it, sensationalize it, and people consume it, and they think it's coming straight from the throne room of God. No, I don't see it. So like I said before, don't just use social media to consume, contribute. That's very important. So I want to talk about this whole scandalous things. Now, in the past, I think, two weeks, but going back a little bit further, We've heard scandals from different churches. And uh, I have to say this is happening a lot in the Western church. What's happening to Western Christianity and to the American church? It's finished. It's done with. Just a handful of revival, just a few churches, a few ministers, few ministries hanging on to the Lord, walking in the way of the Holy Spirit, being faithful to their calling, the rest, I would say 90% of American Christianity, the American version of the church, is in deep trouble. They have gone totally apostate. And we've seen the scandals. And people are contributing more to it. So there was Tony Evans, African-American preacher in, in Dallas, Texas. There was Robert Morris, another mega preacher from a mega church in Texas. What's going on in Texas? I thought Texas was part of the Bible Belt. Strong in the faith, strong in Christianity. I don't know what's going on over there. Then there was Benny Hinn ongoing. I'm coming to that. Then there was Mike Bickle from IHOP, International House of Prayer, not the pancake place. So his controversy and scandal after scandal. Something that happened, what, 30 years ago is coming up right now. Tony Heaven steps down as lead pastor. He doesn't say what his sin is. And he says, I've, been, I've repented. I've, re I've been restored. And you can see all these channels. I never jumped out to that. I saw the videos. I saw a bit of it. And I said, okay, I'm done with this. Because the rest of it, a lot of YouTubers started putting it out there. And I call them, these are Christian influences. They're supposed to point you to Christ, but all they do in their channels is this kind of controversy. If there was no scandal, no controversy, none of these preachers falling away or stepping down, I don't even know what kind of content they would. I don't even think they would have a job. Because many of them looks like they have made social media their full-time work, full-time work employment over the year. So these are the scandals. And there are many more. There are many, many more. Uh, there was some back 
a couple of months ago. Uh, my wife showed me that of a pastor back in, again, in America. Killed his wife, said that she died because of an accident, blah, blah, blah. It's an ongoing situation. So there's a lot more scandalous things happening over there. And the Benny Hinn, Mike Winger thing. I did a video on this. Um, I even forgot the date when I did it about two months ago. You can check my older videos. And that was about Mike Winger's four-hour expose on Benny Hinn. I thought he stopped. Because a lot of other Christian influencers, YouTube Christian influencers came up with their opinion. Yes, I dropped the video, but I had to make sure that it was very, very non-controversial. I didn't want to bring any controversy or scandal into it. I had to be very objective on it and not take sides on it. So what happened now to it? Well, two and a half months, or I think about three months later, Mike Winger is still going after this. Wow. I don't know if it's ministry or just plain hobby, jobless. You just go after one man and you make him make it a mission to come out against him constantly. And Mike Winger got Costi him, Benny Hinn's nephew, onto his show and spoke about it. Why? Why even do that? Why go there? How does it preach the gospel? How does it glorify the name of the Lord God Most High? How is it edifying the body of Christ? Nothing. Looks like Mike Winger has got absolutely nothing else to do. He's just targeted one person while there's so much more going on. And this is the nastiness that I see on social media. If you're not using it to glorify God and spread hope, if you're just going to be spreading negativity, there's a time and a place to do it, to call out false preaching, false teaching, false doctrine, false theology, false prophets and prophetesses and false preachers and pastors. Yes, call them out to warn the people, but don't make it into a hobby, into a personal vendetta. And don't try to show that, oh, look at me, I'm so brave, I'm calling out all these people. No, there is no award or reward in heaven for that. Do you understand? The Lord is not saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Imagine if he had to say, I don't know who you are. Oh, I made a whole bunch of YouTube videos exposing false preachers, Lord. No, I don't know who you are. Go away. Get away. I never knew you. Be very careful. Don't get on it to always preach negative stuff or to go after all these false problems. They're going to be coming. You can't put an end to them. We are living in the last days of the last days, the end times. We don't look at the hour and we don't look at the minute and we're looking at the seconds. The countdown has started. The Lord Jesus is coming soon for his church. And after that, it's going to be even worse than that. So you're focusing too much on false prophets. There's so many channels that my wife and I used to consume till it really broke us. And we had to repent of watching those channels, unsubscribe them because I knew they were all garbage and filth. They're all the time they were making fun of. Uh, mega churches, mega preachers, calling them false, calling them fake. And that's all they did. That's the only content they put out there. Nothing to build up the body of Christ. And the worst part, when you get on social media, are the people who follow you, the people who subscribe to you, the people who are influenced by you. I don't know if it's influenced in a good way, in a positive way, whether they are built up and edified, but these people are so influenced. It's like you've got your own little posse, your own little gang. And they all speak the same lingo. Very dangerous move over there. If you're getting on social media and you want to start something on a social media platform, Christian related, biblical related, and if you're going to go there to argue, to contend, to debate, to fight, to sow discord in the body of Christ, stop. Stop. Go in the corner, repent, stay away from social media. That is definitely not the platform for you. Absolutely not. If you're going to go there to mock other Christians and mock the move of the Holy Spirit. Like I said, revival is happening right here in Bangalore, India. The move of the Holy Spirit is mighty and powerful. A strong anointing that we saw in the service. My wife and I, with my family was there. You know, my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter said, what an amazing service that was. Where lives were touched. And we have people like cessationists who hate mir miracles, signs and wonders and we ca keep calling them out. All they do is mock, 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 criticize. Shame on them. Shame on Christian influencers 
using social media to mock and to criticize and to keep calling her. You do it once. Fine. Mike Winger, you do it once. Enough. Now you got to call Costi him. He left one ditch to get into the Reformed theology ditch and the Calvinism ditch. It's two sides of the same coin. Doesn't make him a hero. And Mike Winger's no hero for doing this. Now it's just becoming a joke. And we got many more. All As soon as Tony Evans stepped down, Robert Morris stepped down, everybody, woo, they just started jumping on to the bandwagon of social media and to the platforms I mentioned and started putting out their content. How does it bless anybody? It doesn't bless anybody at all. What are we supposed to do, church? Focus on what is godly, what is righteous, what is true, that comes from above. Avoid detestable things. I know that on social media, as Christians, we can see nasty, perverse, detestable, horrendous, wicked things. And there are Christians who scroll, who consume that day in, day out. No wonder that their faith is broken. No wonder they're falling away. No wonder they're walking in ways that are against the word of God. And they think they're still going to be blessed and edified. No. That's where you come in. If you know that somebody is straying away because of social media, come up with something that opposes it. Let it be content that will uplift, to encourage, to build up, to edify, to show them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's it. To stay away from this nonsense. And to stay away from even others who propagate this nonsense. I know. I know what I'm saying is difficult because... In this past couple of weeks, I saw a YouTube channel. I, I didn't go through the whole thing. This guy is very big in the Christian influencing community uh, uh, world or entire group or committee or whatever it is. Imagine calling yourself a Christian influencer. Just that term itself, it's, it's lousy. It's terrible. Christian influencer. Okay, leave it. So he comes out with a video, top 10 YouTube, Christian YouTube channels you should avoid. And it's quite weird and ironic. This guy's got a t-shirt saying, got Jesus with a question mark. Keeps his cap backwards. You probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not dropping names. You do your own research. And just prior to that video, he did a collab video. Very common in Christian social media and Christian influence circles. A collab video with two of those people that he called out a few weeks later or a few days later by saying, don't watch their channels. <laughs> How stupid and lame is that? All of them involved. I call them all out as just absolutely disgraceful people. Reprobates. This is what Christian influence is. That's why I, I'm going to say this. Please don't get mesmerized by the American version of Christianity. Because most of these channels are Western-based channels over there. I'm not being biased or racist. I'm saying... Most of that filth is coming out for what is left of the American version of Christianity in the American church. It does not edify anyone at all. What I see right here in India is a total opposite. Yeah, there are a few. My wife showed me a video a couple of days ago. I was shocked because this is happening right here in Bangalore. A self-proclaimed prophet uh, and his wife, prophetess. They got very big titles. They, need, they have to be called reverend, doctor, apostle, prophet, whatever. Not just brother, not just sister, you know. Ridiculous titles. And he's preaching. Half his preaching does not even make any sense. It does not even coincide or even comes out from the word of God. It's just whatever he wants to mumble. Then came the time for offering and money. He put his details on the screen, his GPay account, his bank account, and people were coming and just throwing money. Absolute, it was just coming and giving it to him and he was throwing it and they were throwing it on the ground. I've seen this in churches back in the West. It's very common in some of them. But to see it right here happening in India, it breaks my heart. But people are misled by such charlatans and such fools. And they're using social media. They had a live event, but it was on social media because through social media, you get more money. How? Because you're reaching thousands and thousands. The views compared to the people who came physically are a lot more. You could probably get about 20 people, 30 people, close to about 50, 100 people to a church service. But those watching online probably be double, triple numbers. So you can see. 
rather than use it to glorify God. This fellow, this couple, were using it to glorify themselves and to scam people out of their money. And it's happening. It's happening right in India. It's a shameful thing. But it's not as bad as what I see in the Western church today. It's becoming nasty. And most of these Christian influencers, they're just eating each other. They're just turning on each other. They're not using it for the glory of God. They're using it to just glorify themselves and to create more controversy and more drama and sensationalize. Except for a handful of people of God, except for a handful of even channels that I subscribe to and watch who I know are godly content that blesses my heart, blesses my spirit, that I'm edified from hearing it. The rest, oh my goodness, I'm, just, I'm done with them. So, coming back to the original question. Actually, two, two questions. Do you want to start? Or do you have a desire to start? My answer is simple, yes. The second one, which is even more important. Are you ready to preach boldly, confidently, without compromise, to speak out against the culture and against what the world offers, what the enemy offers, and to glorify the name of Jesus? Are you ready to speak on those issues, knowing that you're going to get a backlash? Because... If you're going to speak on controversial issues all the time, and especially with heresy hunters, like I see a lot of it, you're going to get a lot of views. But I'm going to guarantee one thing. No one is going to be blessed through it. All you're going to create is more negative discord in the body of Christ. If you're going to create content to mock Christians, to call out Christians, especially, oh, they're mega preachers and they're mega churches. See all the fallen preachers and mega. How do you know it's not happening in small churches? Who said only the Lord is going to say, oh, oh, uh, you're from a small church? Okay, enter into the joy of the Lord. You're from a mega church? No, nah, you can't enter into the joy of the Lord. Go away. I don't know who you are. Seriously? Who says that? Who comes up with junk like that? It's pure garbage. Don't fall for that church. Don't fall for it. No. I want to encourage you today that if you're ready to start something on social media, whether you're going to be typing out if you're a good uh, content creator in words, I don't use words. I'd rather do video here. You can do it. Now, if you don't want to show your face, that's fine. Like I said, you can do a faceless channel. You can read a couple of scriptures and uh, minister and preach on that and show some video and some images. Even AI-generated images are very common right now, faceless channels. And it's it's good enough. That's good content. Now, if you want to go all, all the time, prophesy, 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 and release words of prophecy, fine. That's, that's between you and the Lord. All right, I'm not going to call you out or uh, mock you or criticize you for that. But if that's what you want to do, that's between you and the Lord. You have to go to the Lord and seek him in prayer. And if you get clear direction, praise God for that. But if you're using it just to scam people and to con people and to give them all kinds of false prophecies where none of them are going to come through and you got uh, a lot of money coming in, then I'm going to call you out as a fraud, as a charlatan, as a reprobate, as wicked. That's it. There's no other words for that. There's no other words for such a person. So this is it, church. Controversy rules on social media. Don't get involved in it. Go against it. And I want to end with this. When Facebook started opening up the entire uh, idea of creating groups, do you remember that? For those of you still on Facebook groups and pages, apart from your own bio and your own Facebook profile, that went viral. And I remember that time... Uh, there were a lot of people who were against the pre-tribulation rapture. I'm talking about eschatology, that the church will be raptured prior to the seven-year tribulation, which I hold on to because it's biblical truth, because we're not appointed to wrath, and we're not going to be there through the time of Jacob's trouble. The church is not Jacob. Israel is Jacob. And when people who held on to the mid-trib, saying that it's halfway through, again, no critical thinking, and post-trib, like the Lord will come back, then come back and come back and come back and come back. Many times coming back. Like what bridegroom leaves his bride and say, if seven years go through the tribulation, be abused, be molested, you know, go through all that wickedness and I'll come back and get you. No bridegroom would ever say that to a bride. So a lot of people who held on to the post-trib and mid-trib came onto those groups, pretending to believe in the pre-trib and saying, yes, it's biblically based and started attacking vicious those who held on to the pre-trip. All you have to do is search. Just say that you believe in the pre-trip rapture of the church, the rapturo, the harpazo, the snatching away, the dead in Christ and those who are alive caught up next at the trumpet call. 
you are going to get viciously attacked, not by unbelievers, but by other Christians. That's what social media today is for, Christians turning on Christians. Now, let me ask you this. Does it glorify Jesus? No. Who gets the glory? That's the question. Who's happy when it happens? Angels are not rejoicing over it. So, I'm done. Yes, go ahead. Start your Christian-related channel, YouTube, with a simple camera, simple mic, simple lighting, simple backdrop, wherever you want to do it. Just not the bathroom. <laughs> do it in your car. A lot of people do it. And if you want to do it to point to yourself, I'm going to tell you right now, big stern warning. It's not going to work out in your favor. No. If you want to do it to monetize your channel, get some kind of income from it, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong. I don't. Our channel, Chosen Treasure, is not monetized yet, and I'm not looking to get it monetized. If it happens, it happens. Praise God for it. But look at others. If you want to turn it into a full-time work, a source of income, that's going to be pretty difficult. I, I don't recommend that you do something like that. But if you want to get the Word of God out there to preach and minister, Praise God. If you are looking to build up a platform to get followers for you, don't. Absolutely. Do not do that. Don't ever get on social media to get a group followers, subscribers for you and start saying, oh, look at my subs, look at my followers. They're not following you. They're following Christ. Are you pointing them to Christ? Again, are you willing to do this boldly without compromise to talk on these issues? Fine. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord guide you with his hand of mercy and greatness and his awesome power. May the Holy Spirit do his will in your life. Not your will, not my will, but the will of the Father in your life. And may the Lord use you above all. May he use you with or without social media. Either way, may he use you in the building of his kingdom in the month of July. Our prayer is that you will always focus on the Lord whether you're using social media or not, point people to Jesus. Now is the time. We're not living in hours or minutes. We're living in seconds. We're living on borrowed time. Time is very short. See what's happening around the world. See what's happening in the Middle East. See what's happening all across the nations. Jesus is coming back. And I leave you with these two things. Maranatha. I bid you Maranatha, church, this day. And may the Lord guide you and lead you. And I pray and hope that you will become a blessing using social media to other people, to edify the body of Christ, and above all, give glory to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, the one true living God. So have a blessed day ahead of you. Have a blessed week. And I've got a lot more con content coming up. There is one that I'm working on. I'll give you a little sneak preview on it. It's called Churchianity. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to keep it controversial, but it, I, I suppose it will be controversial. And that's something that we need to address. All right. Take care, everybody. God bless and shalom in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Bye-bye.